Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video what we're going to be going over is using the foliage tool to create a nice looking landscape and foliage in, inside of our game. So we're not actually going to be creating the landscape here itself, just the foliage on top of it so, that it, so that's obviously trees, bushes, vegetation, all that good stuff. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So the first thing we're going to do is up in the top left we're going to go from select mode and go down to foliage or you can obviously just press shift 3 as you see there. Once we're here what we want to do is we want to actually then put our foliage that we want to use inside of this tool. So if we press control space we can go to the content browser and the assets I'm using is the open world demo kite collection. Open world kite demo collection I can't remember the exact name but I'll leave a link in the description down below and it is free as well. So I'm going to open that up then go to environments foliage and you can see we have all these different things here. So you can open them up and have a look. These are obviously just different trees, ferns, flowers, grass, all that good stuff. So what I'm going to do is start with the trees. So what you want to do is get the static mesh and drag that into the foliage tool there. It's going to say choose a location for foliage type asset. Unless you want it in a different place, just press save because it will put it where you just got it from. And then we're just going to do this with all of the different assets that we want in here. So I want this tree in there as well. Again, save that location and again, I'm going to do this for all of the ones which I have in this pack. So there's not a lot for me in here, but these are all the ones which I'm going to be using. And you don't just need to have one type, so you don't just need trees or bushes or grass. You can have as many different things in here as you want. So I'm not going to put a lot of flowers in because this is quite a lot of stuff. So I'm just going to start with just a few like so. And once you've got all of your foliage in here, which you can see I now have, you should have something which looks a little bit like this. So straight away, what we can do is just hold left click and we're going to start painting all this stuff in. So you can immediately see we've now got all of this here and this does look pretty nice because what we're doing is we're just painting in everything which we have by default. So this looks very nice. However, it's not going to be doing it amazingly because it's not too efficient and it's going to look pretty repetitive after a while if we were to do this. And the reason why it's not too efficient is because as you can see, we've got nearly a thousand of each asset type in this small area here. So it will run all right on my PC because I've got a fairly high end one. However, on a lower end PC, especially for someone playing the game, it might not run as smoothly. So what I'm going to do is hold down left shift and also left mouse button to erase all of this, which I've just put in like so. Now we're going to go over setting up a bit better. So some of the basic tools is we can change the brush size so we can increase that. And we can also increase or decrease the density of what we're painting. So we can make it bigger and if we lower the density, there's going to be a lot less placed in there. Obviously, I put it on zero then by accident. So you can already notice the difference between this and this. If I just reset that back to about 0.5, I'll get rid of that like so. Then what we can also do is we can select these assets and change different things individually for them. So we can change the density of just the trees. So if you wanted the density of the trees to be even higher, so we want it to be 500, we want it to be even lower, we want it to be 50, you can change these for each individual asset as well as just the paintbrush itself. You can also change the scaling of them. So if you wanted the scaling to be uniform, scale X minimum 0.6, maximum 1.5, what this is going to do is it's going to give us random heights for them. So they're going to look different each time, it won't look too repetitive, they are going to be slightly different. What I'm going to do is select everything else, then untick it. That means we're not going to paint that in, we're only going to paint in this tree here which is perfect because that's what I want to show you what we're doing. So these trees are actually a lot smaller than I expect them to be. However, as you can see, they have different scaling. So we have one which is very small here and one which is a lot bigger here. So again, this just makes them look different like so. So what I'm going to do is actually make these a lot bigger. So what I'm going to do is let's say 4.5 and 5.5. Let's see what they look like. If I had to get rid of these, they're going to look something like that. And again, you can see these are way too dense for what we want. So let's get rid of them and we'll go up and change the density to let's say 10 and see what that looks like. You can see that looks a lot better now already. So this is really how you can get individual with each different asset type. So you have different densities for each one. Because if we didn't put the grass on as well, we obviously want the grass to be more dense than the trees. So we'll get something like this. So if we now select the grass, we can increase the density to let's say 500 and we'll get something along those lines once again. As you can see, you can obviously go into a lot more detail than what I'm doing and spend more time on it. However, you can see this is very easy to customize to get something which already looks pretty good like so. 
And again, you can obviously do this with all of the different foliage assets which you are using. So if we continue going through these settings, you can then obviously turn on single instance mode if you want. I've done the scaling there. You, you can also do a slight rotation on them as well. So if you wanted minus 0.5 and 0.5, you get something along these lines. So they're gonna be slightly rotated at an angle like that as well, which again also looks quite good. Let me just disable grass like so. So again, we get something like this. If I just change it to minus five and five to make it more obvious. However, sorry, I should mention that isn't the rotation. Very sorry about that. This is actually if they're gonna be off of the ground or not. What you'll notice is some of them are going underground. Some of them are hovering above ground like this. So that's also something different. So again, sorry about the rotation there. That's something else which I was thinking of. But again, you'll notice you have all these different options here. Now align to normal means it's going to always be following the location of the landscape or if you want them to be pointing straight up. So if I were to go to my landscape tool and just create a very, very basic bump here, what we're going to see is if I go back to my foliage is if let's put the trees in, they're going to be going off to the side like that, which you might like, but you might not because trees typically don't do that. They tend to go straight up. So if you were to untick align to normal, what you should see is now I'll just constantly point straight up, which as you can see, looks a lot better and a lot more realistic, like so. Then here we have the random yaw. Now this is what I was thinking of earlier with the random rotation on them. So you can change the pitch angle to let's say 60, and you'll notice we get something along these lines now. So now it's gonna be rotated. Obviously 60 is quite a lot, but that was just to show you an example. So if we go to five, it's a lot more subtle and looks a lot nicer. Again, you obviously have all these different settings here. The instant settings are just the same as your usual asset settings. Everything else here is the same as normal, nothing specific to foliage. So those are all of the different individual settings for the different foliages. And again, you can select and deselect different ones like so. So if I were to select all of them and enable them, we can now see I can start painting something like this. And you can see very, very quickly, instantly and very simple, I've now created a scene which looks like this. So we can get in and walk around something with a very, very dense vegetation like so. Obviously it doesn't look amazing because I've just thrown in a load of random stuff, but you obviously spend a lot more time making it look a lot nicer. I'm just showing you how quick and easy it is to actually do. But again, I've now got nearly 45,000 grass instances just in this location here, which obviously isn't great. That is for me because I put the density up to 500 and the density of the paint is on one as well. So that's obviously not ideal, but again, for me, that's gonna be fine. But for you, obviously just change the density to see what works best for you. And there are also other methods of making this run a lot smoother using foliage culling, which I'll go over in a separate video, which will be my next video uploaded. The reason why I'm not doing it in this video is because that's also just something which a lot of people want to find separately from the foliage tool itself. So I'm gonna be going over it in a separate video. It'll be very, very quick. And again, the next video, which I upload. So I think that'll be it for this video, which we've done everything we want to do. What we've done is we've set up the foliage tool so that we can actually quickly and create foliage, which looks like this, making it nice and efficient, changing all the different settings to make it look different for us as well. So we can get it looking nice and perfect and natural and unique and not repetitive. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.